Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kościuszka Foundation's webinar, The Ghost of Shakespeare, with Anna Freilich and Ross Afberg. My name is Eva Zadvorna. I'm Director of Cultural Affairs at the Foundation, and I want to thank everyone for taking time out and meeting us here today on Zoom. Uh, at the beginning, just a quick information. This, will be, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Foundation's YouTube channel. Also, at the end of the program, we will hold a Q&A session. Therefore, if you have any questions, you may ask them using Q&A or raise a hand feature available on your screen. Uh, recently, we started a series of online lectures, discussions on Polish contemporary literature and Polish writers that will be presented on the Foundation's platform throughout the year. The series would not be complete without hosting, as a speaker, a New York City-based Polish writer, poet, scholar, and educator who for over three decades taught Polish language and literature at the Columbia University. The author of recently published The Ghost of Shakespeare, the book our webinar takes the title from. I'm speaking, of course, here about Dr. Anna freilich Zions. Dr. Freilich is the author of 17 books, and her poetry, reviews, articles, and essays have been published in various journals in the United States and in Europe. Anna Freilich is a senior lecturer emerita at the Department of Slavic Languages and associate faculty member at Harriman Institute at Columbia University. She graduated from the Warsaw University with a master's degree in Polish literature, and then she defended her PhD dissertation in the Slavic department of the New York University. For her many achievements in the literary sphere, Anna Freilich received numerous recognitions, including the Knight Cross of the Order of Merit of Poland, which was presented to her by the President of Poland in 2002, the Distinguished Paul Award received in 2017, and most recently, the Suzanne Lotarski Distinguished Achievement Award presented to her last year by the Polish Institutes of Arts and Sciences of America. Throughout her long career as a lecturer of Polish literature at the Columbia University, Anna Freilich inspired many students to read, to study, and further spread awareness about the Polish literature. One of them, one of her students is here with us, Ross Avberg. Ross received a Master of Philosophy and a Master of Arts degree from Columbia University, where he studied Russian and Polish literature. He has then translated various books from Polish to English, including Marek Łasko's autobiography, Beautiful 20-somethings. He also translated dozens of Anna Freilich's poems, which have been published in a variety, variety of places, including world poetry. It's worth to mention that Ross is also a co-founder of New Vessel Press, a publishing house specializing in literature in translation. Anya, Ross, thank you very much for being here with us and for agreeing to give this talk for our audience. And now not to prolong any longer, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eva, and thank you, Kościuszko Foundation. <laughs> so thank you again, Eva, and the Kościuszko Foundation. And thank you, Anna. Um, I mean, thank you for you know the past ten years, but but um, <laughs> thank you for appearing with me, and thank you for this wonderful book. Um, I just want to kind of set the stage. I I um, have been lucky enough to know you for so actually looking back at old emails. Um, I think our first correspondence was in two thousand and eight when I came oh. to visit um, the Columbia program. So I've known you for over a decade, um, and I, it's you know really been one of the the good fortunes of my life to have you as a teacher, a, a mentor, uh, to know you as a, as, a, as a poet and to read you as a critic um, and to have you as a friend. So I'm, I'm delighted to be here um, and I'm delighted that you're here. Um, I wanna start off with- The same on this side. <laughs> I, should, I should- One you know, of my best students and- <laughs> the, the one thing that strikes me this is, strikes me about your poetry and about your criticism is there's a real feeling um, of just elevating the work that you're writing about or the, the work itself that you are writing, the poetry that you're writing or the, or the other's work that you're writing about. It comes from a real genuine place. And I was looking at the, 
the first email we ever had, the first email exchange, I'd come to visit your class at Columbia. And at the end of the class, you said, please email me with any questions. So a couple of days later, I emailed you and I said, there's this one Miwosh poem, Elegy for NN, and he mentions a certain Mama Fliegeltaub. And do you have any idea who this Mama Fliegeltaub is? And you wrote back immediately and you said, I will track down the answer. And you did. And it, it just, I think that encapsulates um, your attitude toward your students and toward the work, right? Not, nobody That's is- how I remember that, yes. I, yeah. had to, I had to email some other people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But so, I mean, that, that I think it, it is a good kind of summation of, of your attitude towards the work because it, it's a detail in a single poem that you went out of your way to track down, but it helps, first of all, to understand the poem and it helps the, the person who is trying to understand the, the poem. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll start asking you about the book um, with what, you know, to, I think to many seems like a minor detail and many people don't even notice. Um, but maybe, you know, just as a lifetime reader and, and now as a publisher, I did notice the, the, the dedication in the book is to your parents. Um, and I, I just wanted to, to ask you about that and, and tell you how you, and, and ask you to, to talk about kind of how you came to that decision and, and, and why. Uh, you know, first of all, my parents created me not only biologically, but also mentally and culturally. Uh, you know, I mentioned here and there, I heard from my father a poem, uh, Mickiewicz's poem <laughs> before I was four years old, I, I, in Ural. So <laughs> they s sort of inspired me from, <laughs> from my, <laughs> very, very early childhood to love poetry. And uh, they, they were my te first teachers, you know, as parents are, but they taught me moral values. They supported me all the time throughout my school, throughout not me and my sister. And they supported my writing from the very beginning. And I owe them a lot, uh, and I'm happy I could commemorate their their names and uh, their and uh, their life. We will talk later about it. Maybe uh, will be opportunity. Uh, I realize much later how fascinating and difficult it was. So they deserved, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't argue with that. Um, and actually, as we'll get to later, you're, you and as you mentioned in the book, your parents were exiles. So many of the people you write about in the book are exiles, um, including yourself, an uh, emigre exile. And, and so I wanted to ask you um, an impossible question. Uh, but with your own body of work, how do you think what you write about, who you write about, might that have been different had you stayed in Poland? How, how do you think being, a, being an emigrate exile poet shaped your writing? You know, it, definitely, definitely. But since I'm not a fiction writer, I cannot tell you how I would have been writing had I stayed in Poland. But um, the exile trauma, the experience of becoming stateless, first days in Vienna, months in Rome, Rome when we were waiting for vetting, seven months, uh, first uh, years in New York, they ha it had enormous um, influence of, of my outlook of, of life. You know, the first experiences, for example, in Vienna, you go to store, you want to buy a milk and they put milk on, <laughs> on the table. <laughs> you pay and say bye-bye. <laughs> After <laughs> experiences different in Poland, they're already something um, learning experience. But what was already in Lom when 
I wrote a poems, I realize that I notice that the tone and the depth of my poems has changed intensely because of the shock, uh, uh, and because of the of the trauma. Be we were still on the, you know, level uh, phase of of being. Uh, sort of thrown out into the ocean, you know, into the water um, after, after crossing the, the border. So, uh, so this is a, a very, very big, uh, big uh, uh, shock and experience. And no doubt my, I would have been informed by different inspiration and different experiences ha have I not, uh, you know, uh, emigrated. But uh, that's, that's what it is. I'm not going to Rilke and his idea of, of pain, right? And, and so on, a wound. And, uh, but that was, that was the wound, <laughs> necessary wound for writing. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to <laughs> say something more? No, that's great. I, yeah. No, that's great. I, 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 can, you, can you see me? Am yes. I still here? OK. Yes, yes. Um, OK, it, it, my internet was fluctuating. But um, no, that's great. And, and to continue kind of on the, on the theme of exile, which is what so much of this book is about, um, Start, starting with the very first essay in the book, um, which is about Miwosh and the landscape of return, you point out an idea that the American landscape is not an easy landscape to form a connection to. Miwosh compared making a home here in a letter, which you quote in your essay, to a mouse trying to nest in an aluminum pot. Would you elaborate on that? It's, I think it's a very interesting idea and and you write about so many let's, poets and artists. Let's, um, let's, let's try because yes, this is, it is interesting idea. Um, and uh, I think that to a great extent, uh, this is the, the exilic trauma, trauma that affects the perspective in the, of the landscape and of the surroundings. Uh, it, it is not that, it is a foreign language uh, landscape or an easy to form connection to, but it is also the fact that there was no choice. And making home is related to the circumstances of one's emigration, whether it is forced or voluntary. Miłosz had an exceptionally difficult and disastrous right situation at the beginning and for a long time. And we have to remember that he also went through the process of adaptation uh, to a certain extent. And uh, it was also very difficult for uh, the war emigration poets. Some like Wierzyński adapted to a degree, but his friend, uh, Lehon was compelled to commit suicide because of the of the harassment by his own countrymen. He could not make living here, and uh, so so this is this is complex situation. And in case of poetry, for example, Ukrainian poet Vasil Makhno, much younger generation, much much younger and who came here on, this, on his own will, the foreignness is a part of fascination. You see how different it is, right? For, for Vasil Magno, it is nothing to throw the bridge from Brooklyn to Europe. And uh, because all is, is open space for him. It was open space from the beginning. Um, 
let's say, the situation of the Polish writers who came here seeking rescue, making a home, it was traumatic and seeking a rescue because of the per <coughs> persecution, they, they were uh, afraid to come back to a communist Poland, right? Because uh, it was almost obvious that they will be persecuted. And uh, so, so this is, this is uh, the situation, their situation was really traumatic. And I don't know if you were there, I was teaching the course, the North America in the Polish literature. I don't know if you were, no, that mm -hmm. was probably when you graduated already. And we studied different approaches by different writers for, cent for centuries, of Polish writers who came here. And uh, personally, I felt lost here. I was petrified by the bridges, those big bridges, those, those humongous long streets from river to, to, to the ocean. But at certain point, I started to, to adapt. And I will tell you the anecdote. I, I wrote a poem about beautiful meadow in Catskills. And uh, the Polish poet in Israel, who wrote a re the review and he wrote that I transported the Polish medal <laughs> to America <laughs> because he could not accept <laughs> that the American <laughs> medal could be beautiful, that American landscape could be <laughs> beautiful. So this is this is this is a complex uh, issue, and uh, because as you, as you know, it's our uh, the state of mind, the state of our uh, emotional uh, life, right? And uh, when we look at things, right? It's not only that we look at things and we see as it is, it's, <laughs> it's us <laughs> in our looking. So, so this is, this is, but de definitely, definitely the exile, especially forced exile uh, affects the, uh, you know, impre impression and, uh, and, uh, way of as we look at, at everything landscape and and y yes mm -hmm. yeah um I, I think that's a that that polish meta stories it's funny of course but it's also it could be true <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, yes, but that was real American medal, <laughs> but very beautiful. <laughs> That's why I said I pointed that it was in Katsky. Yeah. <laughs> it is real, <laughs> not transported from from Europe. Uh, in the, uh, I just want you to 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 tell this funny story. Um, you write about a funny incident in your book. Mm -hmm. Which um, you were working as a reporter for, um, what's it? Uh, Free Europe, Radio Free Europe. Radio Free Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, you called uh, Miłosz for an interview. Mm -hmm. um, no, and... no, 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 no. That the interview was not for the Radio Free Europe. The interview was, I was in early 90s. I already, I did not work for Free Europe anymore. I, uh, I stopped working in, in the in 1980 when I finished, I, I did interview with Miłosz after his Nobel Prize. And then I stopped, I stopped working with Free Europe. That was uh, for the Polish magazine Przegląd Polski here in New York. And I came up, the, the people were talking, the always, you know, every month you have list of bestsellers and bestsellers and they said, so I decided I will ask real people <laughs> about their real uh, reading. 
and I um, contributed monthly column for two years, I think, uh, for the for the Przegląd Polski, Pol Polish uh, review, no, not Polish review because Polish review is in there, but, um, and I interviewed people, people about their latest um, readings. And I um, pick uh, two or three uh, very prominent uh, personalities, or well known, or, or not well prominent, but you know, known, and uh, some people that I met accidentally. And I asked them about their readings. And in, that was in January 1993. I asked Miłosz, and he to give me such such interview and i, I was i was uh, in brooklyn he was in berkeley where you are now in berkeley no yes. you are in berkeley he was in berkeley i and, think i like uh, berkeley better than he liked berkeley but um yes <laughs> that's good <laughs> you should write poems about <laughs> berkeley <laughs> um and uh, I conducted it on the phone and we had very nice conversation. And when I finished, I realized that even though my phone was um, um, connected to, to microphone, right? So uh, it was con attached, but it was not connected. I didn't press whatever there was to press. And I, I got panicked and my husband said, call him immediately because later he will not believe, you know. So I called him and he said, well, he was, he was annoyed. And he said, it's always like that with you. I said, no, this happened first time in my life. <laughs> and he agreed to do it next day and he gave me the same interview next evening because he was already tired and so that was that was uh, the uh, this anecdote but he also i don't know the, uh, his uh, his granddaughter was my student do you know that no when no. i guess this was before my time before, before your or time, right his granddaughter was my student i taught her polish and he was very happy about it. And he always <laughs> talked about her. He talked to me, your student. <laughs> so, so, so yes, yes. And she, she is a medical doctor and doctor of medicine. She, she's very, uh, you know, a nice person and very educated person. <laughs> It's it's one of the, the I mean that educating Miłosz's granddaughter teaching her Polish it's just like one of the great ironies of of exile right that right right one, one exile teaching a granddaughter of somebody who, she was no longer in exile I mean she was um, American at that point right. Um, but you know, children. I see uh, my my grandchildren. If you, if one is raised in the environment in the um, uh, of the whole family, right? Like in the past, the families lived together. Uh, like my my professor Zoya Yurie told me that she she was half Polish, half Russian, and. There was a house uh, on half house uh, their <laughs> Polish grandparents lived on another her Russian. So she said the minute he crossed the <laughs> door, <laughs> she changed her language, right? Mm -hmm. And but now, you know, uh, you live in one uh, state and your grandchildren live in another state. <laughs> you talk to them one, once a, a week or something, or even twice a week. Uh, you don't want to be a teacher. I, don't want, I didn't want to be a teacher of my, of my grandchildren. I wanted to be a grandmother. <laughs> so, so, so this is, yes, and she, she, and she learned Polish, right? Mm.
Well, I'm, 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 I'm glad, um, I don't know, it must have been very interesting and I'm glad uh, you both approved of the situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I want to just switch to uh, another essay of yours in the collection, um, The Last Time We Saw Her. Uh, you mentioned a note that Wisława Szymborska scribbled on the back of some sort of collage. And I want to know what kind of collage this was. But um, the note said, sometimes I think the absurd is the most essential ingredient in reality. And that, right. I, I that sentence, I think it has certainly um, deep resonance with a lot of um, Polish literature and also a lot of Russian literature. I mean, they're uh, actually, you know, Russian literature from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, but I, I, I think the, that sentiment that the absurd is the most essential ingredient in reality is relevant to, you, to the essay about the ghost of Shakespeare and Szymborska's work too, your essay. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of absurd in, in Shakespeare, but it's also, that's what reality is. And, and I, I just want, want kind of your, your take on that and feel free to disagree. <laughs> I, I I do disagree with you, even even you will not allow me, uh, because at least on my point of view and my point point of view on on uh, on uh, that essay of mine, of course there is absurd existing in reality. Yes, on on every every step, uh, you can see it. But uh, as far as my essay is concerned, what I am after is more than an absurd. And I call it, it is a crime without punishment. Because this, the letter, the, the poems that I examine in this part of the essay um, relate to the millions of people who were tortured and murdered in the name of an absurd Marxist, Marxist theory that I call absurd. <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, a lot of, you know, of her generation, poets and writers and scholars, um, after the war experience, Many writers joined the Communist Party and supported the regime because they believed that that will be something better and something uh, more moral and so on. But uh, after the, the Khrushchev's disclosure of the, the, the horrible crime, the, the terror of Stalinist uh, regime, right? Many. Uh, not, I don't know many, but a yeah, number of these right, writers uh, felt um, sort of need to cleanse themselves. Ruzevich also wrote a, a letter of uh, a, a poem on rehabilitation. And uh, because I don't know if you know what rehabilitation was, all these people who were, uh, who were persecuted because of the of the of the crime were rehabilitated later, like in the later fifties, but uh, it was a, a horror. It was it was horrific experience and horrific experience for those people who believed in it, and uh, some of them and and uh, writers who who prized the the socialism and all this. And uh, uh, what it uh, related to is exhuming the bodies of victims who, 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 and to give them a proper uh, burial. And uh, so the graveyard scene for me, in my understanding, became the symbol and the metaphor of cleansing from guilt those people who sort of accepted uh, the, the regime. And, and I don't know, um, you, there, there is a book uh, by Jan Cott, mm -hmm. uh, Shakespeare, Our Contemporary. And he explains there a lot because um, new productions 
productions of Shakespeare plays in 56 in Poland were perceived as a representation of reality. And, you know, Shakespeare covered everything and he still does. I don't know if you noticed, but several days ago, there was a talk of Shakespeare on the news. <laughs> on the news here, <laughs> he covers our reality <laughs> as well. So, so, but, so here I, I don't uh, agree with you, uh, you know, on exactly uh, interpreting uh, this, her, her uh, remarks. But of course, of course, there is, there is a lot of absurd. So what do you say, do you want, <laughs> I think let's continue the conversation afterwards. I'm not. I'm. I'm almost okay. convinced. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, you you holding up the book just reminds me. I just wanted to show everybody. It's a mm -hmm. it's a really beautiful book. It is. Um, uh, it's Janusz Kapusta's uh, Janusz Kapusta's uh, cover. Right, and and uh, really a great job. Um, of, uh, by, by Ron, for, you know, Ron, Ron, Ron Ronald Mayer, right? Selecting it, I mean, it's really, really a great collection. Like, and editing, and we worked together some years on this on this book, yeah. putting well, it together. No, I mean, it's yeah. really, really fantastic. Mm -hmm. so, again, and there are some uh, of your translations here too. There are. There are. I'm, I'm happy oh, about that. Articles, right, and yours, and uh, other uh, uh, former <laughs> student of mine. Right, um, Timothy. Um, Timothy. I'm forgetting Timothy. his last name. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will remember in a minute. Um, <laughs> hey, I think. Um, but he, yeah, fantastic. He, you know, fan, also mm -hmm. fantastic translation. Um, right. I want to just go back. Um, Kind of go back to the question about landscapes but ask it in a different context um you have a really great article about henrik greenberg and, and greenberg is somebody who's known in the united states but i i don't think i mean you could say this about almost every foreign writer right never really got their due in the united states this is what um you know we don't ever really give give anybody who's not american their proper recognition <laughs> um with rare exception, but Henry Greenberg. And, and um, you write about um, his description of landscapes. You say, his descriptions of Polish summers are evocative, sensual, and magical, and how different they are from his portrayal of American summers, which are often displaced like the protagonists of Greenberg's American stories. Would you tell me a little bit more about what you mean with this idea and a little bit more about Greenberg too? I, I think, I think um, um, ha as a writer, he may still cherish a view of, of Polish landscape of his childhood and of his uh, young uh, uh, years, right, as a, as a young man. And uh, the, the, you know, it's always, I think like that, that when you, uh, the, the landscape of your childhood uh, is is natural, is magical, right? So so this is this is uh, uh, that's that's what what it is, and it is also sort of uh, I think uh, uh, influence of the situation that uh, the story of his protagonist, right? As, as Holocaust survivors, they found a refuge here on, on this uh, continent, but as uh, Greenberg uh, underlines, never found salvation, uh, uh, wh whatever that means. And we, we may remember uh, be, that uh, until the 1985 and the uh, Landsman's movie uh, show right people turned away from from these experiences and and memories and uh, there was no interest in it you know, people didn't want jews including jews didn't want to talk or hear about it didn't want 
to and Israel the same. And uh, many survivors committed suicide here, right? Uh, already on, on, the, on the immigration. And uh, they, they came here to hope to heal their wounds and uh, they not succeeded. And was, as Grimberg said somewhere, you know, it was a promised land, but <laughs> the, the land that broke its promise. In, in, in this uh, sort of uh, uh, meaning, the, the, the perception and the, the feeling that, so, so uh, I realized recently when we talk uh, before, I realized that his, um, the, the, the ghost of Shakespeare hovers also over his, um, his writing because the topic of his father's death, the, the, his seeking the unknown grave, exhumation and the proper burial. And one of the stories which I totally forgot, have forgotten, is named Hamlet. So, so this is, this is, I, I only recently, I realized that, and uh, his early book, The, the Jewish War, and I'll, there is something uh, interesting about it, introduced uh, a new canon of our literature about Holocaust and uh, mainly his rest restraint from fiction fictionalization. And this is interesting that he, when he was still in Poland, the uh, American publisher uh, wanted to publish that book. And the minute he asked for exile, <laughs> they resigned. <laughs> That was in 67. It was not that interested in his here, he you know, one of the uh, <laughs> hundreds uh, of thousands of, of, of refugees, right? So that was, um, but, uh, but also um, his, his writing is, is based on, on his, when we're talking about restraining from fictionalization, fictionalization, he, um, he does not, um, he uses mostly his own um, experience as basis or somebody else's, but not fiction, the, the real one. And uh, uh, in my essay, I, I cover a variety of, of fascinating matters concerning his, his writings, right? I, I will not uh, tell it all, but these are, these are two, two uh, for me, very, very important things that, that, that from certain point started, people started their in not interest, but you know, knowledge of, of this traumatic, horrific, you know, things that, that, that happened. And Grimberg here, he has a, a big, big, um, how to say, uh, part in this uh, psychological and historical and literary uh, contribution. Uh, did I answer your question or? Yeah, and you did. And I, I was looking over the Greenberg essay again this morning and there's a line that jumped out that you write about how for Greenberg, um, Poland is a country with, with a past, but no future. Whereas the United States is a country with no past, but it does have a future. Yeah. Um, and, and that was a very interesting line. It also yeah. mm -hmm. uh, can't untie that from the fact that for so much of Greenberg's writing is around the Holocaust. And so when, you're taught, when your work doesn't proceed chronologically as you do through life, then you are kind of necessarily tied to the past. And so, you know, Poland for him doesn't have a future because he left Poland and, and 
right? And he didn't continue to make a future there in the States. He has no past, but he also chose never to write about, to kind of create his own past in the United States. Um, what do you mean? Uh, I, I, here, I, can, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I can discuss this with you. Well, he, he did not have uh, create his past here. In I just mean if so much of his writing is about is about the Holocaust, is about events that happened earlier. But he he does talk about his his he does talk about life here. But right, mm -hmm. but also you know we have to put his uh, his uh, narrative uh, um, uh, revolves the, the the absurd absurd face of of communism. Also, not only the the the, the uh, he also writes about this in, in, in Poland, right? But, um, you know, the writer writes what he has to write, uh, what he wants to write. Uh, I, I don't really know if we should discuss what, why, what someone does not write about. What do you think? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's an interesting question. I, I would agree. I don't think we should make judgments about what somebody doesn't write about because it's, you know, I, I don't know what, good can, what we can learn from that. Right. I, I, I don't know. I, I cannot discuss that, you know. Um, unless someone covers up things, right? Uh, the, the, but uh, if, that, if the writer does not go this or that direction, it's, uh, it's not really a, a topic to, to discuss. That's what I think. See, 10 years later, uh, and I'm still, I'm 10 years later and I'm still learning. No, 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 I, you know, this is, this is what I, I, I ne never thought about it. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's a Unless, nice. let's say someone was there, has seen it and doesn't want to write about it because it would bring him some, uh, you know, so this, this is different, but, uh, and th there is no really uh, something that, writer has to write unless you are a uh, social, <laughs> socialist realism, <laughs> you know, under socialist realism. But I, I don't know, I'm, um, I'm just, just well, guessing. Anna, we just gotta, um, I'm just gonna ask maybe, you know, two more questions because I wanna see if there are other questions. Um, you have a really wonder, wonderful um, remembrance of Yeji Shigo in your book. Uh, could you talk a little bit about him? Uh, he ran a publication for the blind that you worked at. Um, mm -hmm. And talk a little bit about your work there and, and what it, you know, what it, what, what, what did it teach you about writing or about life? Um, uh, teach me about life. <laughs> um, let me tell you, Jerzy Szczygiel, the blind writer, journalist, my first supervisor when I uh, graduated uh, from uh, Warsaw University with my master degree. Um, I uh, was looking looking for a job, and so somebody told me that that the Braille uh, magazine is looking for uh, you know what Braille is. <laughs> Braille, sure, yeah. Braille, okay. Uh, is looking for the assistant, the magazine um, uh, editor. Yes, <laughs> born in 1932. He lost his parents uh, uh, in, in his childhood. Uh, he lost his brother, his older brother uh, was killed in the German concentration camp because he uh, uh, participated in the underground opposition to, to German uh, occupation, right? And so he was left with one younger brother who with whom whom he took care of and after the war i think post war he he 
he lost his uh, sight and his leg um, on the on the minefield. There was a lot of ac accidents like that. Uh, you step on something or you pick something, and uh, and uh, he. In spite of this, he graduated from very good school for blind children. He graduated from Warsaw University, um, um, uh, Polish literature. He was got married, supported family with his children. And uh, I owe a lot to him on, on every level. He, he was, he, and I'm still in contact with his family. He was, he was, uh, an incredible person, uh, very strong. Uh, he, he always fought for something uh, 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 that he thought it's, it's right. And at certain point, he, uh, the, the, the magazine that I started to work for was the magazine uh, based mainly on uh, 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 reprinted, uh, reprinting in bra Braille um, the, the article existing in other magazines. But at certain point, he created a magazine uh, for blind people, but on both, uh, both uh, bra Braille and uh, regular uh, print. And he were, were, were we were writing. Uh, I was I was involved very much in creating this magazine with him, writing about problems of bra of of uh, 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 blind people, but not not only. And I will skip. I worked four years until I left uh, Poland. Uh, I emigrated. I'll skip a big. We we always were in contact. He he his um, childhood. Uh, uh, was uh, you know his, his um, um, book uh, novel um, about his childhood was turned into the movie by, Kazim by Kazimierz Kutz, very prominent Polish uh, 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 regisseur, is um, director. Director, right? Years passed and there was a martial law in Poland, right? And uh, uh, many uh, journalists were uh, thrown out of work, as we see sometimes here, were thrown out of work uh, from the magazines. And he, and he with his, this magazine very, you know, a small magazine of, for, for blind people, he um, invited him, them to, to write for him. So that was, that was you know, a, a very, very brave uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, very brave, uh, uh, what? The, the your invitation right act. Mm -hmm. and act right and he had a, a employed them and at a certain point he got in a conflict with the authorities and vicious attack caused he, his stroke and and premature death and i expected from here because i observe all this I expected that when the, the system, political system uh, changed in Poland, that his former colleagues would uh, do something to commemorate, commemorate his sacrifice. But uh, I, no, no one was really interested to, to stand for him. And I started to fight from here and uh, was able to accomplish it. He died in 83rd, I think, 83, right? 1983. And in 2012, he was posthumously awarded Order 
Pol uh, of Polonia Restituta by po the Polish president. And um, I, I, was, I was very, very happy that I could uh, accomplish that because, because his memory deserved deserve that. Um, he left a lot of a lot of uh, novels, um, several for young uh, people, and uh, but also he, his his character and all the um, problems that he experienced in life in life in his life, uh, you know, are 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 fascinating, and. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, people to know and to, to remember. So that was my, my uh, very, very interesting, very interesting uh, person. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask one more question and I just want to invite people with questions. Mm -hmm. If anybody has questions, either raise your hand or send questions in. There are uh, six people here, right? I see. Yeah, I think those people were answering. Um, when I asked if people could hear us, it looks like that's uh -huh. what. Okay. Um, okay. But so, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it struck me until now, uh, mm -hmm. but the book is really, if we would consider the book a sandwich, right? Um, it, for, you know, the, the book starts and the book begins with mentions of your parents. Um, right. right? They're, they are the dedication at the very beginning. And then there's this, really beautiful series of essays where you that, that are very personal where you talk about your exile and the exile of your parents and and realizing that uh how it came to you late in life that your parents were exiles that you know they had grown up um first of all in a poland in both in a culture and and on a very on a much more direct level with with actual you know parents and brothers and sisters who were destroyed by the holocaust and, and that when they finally went back to Poland, it wasn't to their hometowns, it was to Szczecin, which was a German town. Um, and you never really put this, you know, this never really became a, a concrete to you until you yourself experienced exile. So I just wanna, um, I don't even know that I have a, a direct question. I just wanna give you an opportunity to, to, to talk about that. Cause I, I, I just think it's so beautiful and the way you write about them and, and actually the very structure of the book seems to me an indication that they're, that they have permeated your existence in a, in a really profound way. So I just wanna kind of hear, um, hear you say a little bit about that. You know, um, when we, when we, um, when we, we are born, right? The first, the first people we met are our parents. And they, for, for uh, our uh, childhood, and no matter how difficult or how, how beautiful it is, they are uh, the natural environment, right? You, as a child or even a very young person, you're really not interested what happened to your parents before, where they are from, what happened to them, to their... Uh, uh, Right, because they, they are there. They are there for you, not that you are for them, right? So this is, this is, and only um, when I got into the, that situation and then my parents came here a um, year later, I thought when I left Poland, I thought I will never see them because they, my father was sick, they, were, they couldn't decide to, to emigrate and all this. And I suddenly realized, I realized about them that their, their life was actually exile all, all the time because when they left one, one uh, town or one place, you know, where they started their life, they have to leave everything and start from the beginning. But also what I realized was the generation of our parents. They experience as a children, they experience 
the Great War, the, the World War II in Europe, which was a, a horror, right? Because it was right there. Now, now in, their, in their 30s, they experienced the, the horrible World War II. If they did not expect, had they not ex, uh, escaped, it happened that they escaped, they, they would uh, die, right? They would be killed. Um, my, my parents lost their families during the Holocaust and could not return, as you mentioned, to, to, the, to the place. And only when I had my experience, I realized what was, and I write about it in my poems, as you know, I realized what was their life and the life of, of, that, of, their, uh, of people from their generation. It was a very, very difficult and traumatic. And in spite of that, they were able to build in Szczecin for us a very uh, good childhood, and they were able to go to and and and, and to, you know work in the gardens and 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 in spite that they were you know uh, uh, thrown out of their uh, of their work when when uh, the, the, the certain changes in the political changes and and, and all this so so that's that's. Uh, and uh, it, it is it is painful on one side, and then I I admire their stamina and their uh, you know uh, moral uh, strength to go through such a very very difficult uh, times life. Well, I think the the lessons and the appreciation uh, shows throughout the whole book. Um, Anna, we're we're at time, um, mm -hmm. so and I and I am very mindful of keeping to time. Um, I want to say thanks um, to you, obviously first and foremost for the book, um, for you know the for a fantastic decade of friendship and mentorship. Um, and um, uh, really, I mean, th this collection of essays is, is profound, it's touching, it's really beautiful. Congratulations to you, to Ron Meyer for putting it together. Um, there are some beautiful translations in there from Thomas and Nessie, another former student of yours. Um, and thanks to everybody who's here. Um, and thanks so much to Eva and the Kosciuszko Foundation for, for hosting this. Definitely. So I will not repeat everything I've signed under your, uh, yes. And I thank you, you know, for all your translations and all the experiences that we had together. <laughs> I need to join you in thanking you <laughs> for this wonderful, interesting uh, conversation, which gave us a journey through time and space to Polish meadows, <laughs> Polish landscapes <laughs> through history. <laughs> Anya, I recall that at the beginning you mentioned that you worked uh, as a journalist, yes, for Polish Review, and you interviewed famous people on what did they read most recently. So at, <laughs> please let, let me ask you the same question that you used to ask. What did Anna Freire Zions recently read that you <laughs> recommend to the audience? I reread my book <laughs> in preparation to this to this interv interview. I, uh, to tell you the truth, the, the difficult question. Uh, <laughs> so let's leave it for another. <laughs> I, no, no, but the I question was book, answered. Right? The ghost I, of the Ghost of Shakespeare. So Bye. everyone interested, the, the book is available to purchase through Anya's website, or it's also available on Amazon, I believe. Um, so it's there. And also, I would like to thank you all very much for this wonderful conversation, everyone who joined us uh, today. 
and uh, we hope to welcome you for our next episode in the se series of discussions and talks on the Polish literature. At uh, this time, we're going to give, a, give you a presentation on the modern version on how to learn Henrik Sienkiewicz. It will be digital Henrik Whoa. Sienkiewicz, it's going to be a presentation. So we'll Very keep you posted nice. on the details. Uh, the event will be in, in March, so shortly. In, in the meantime, once again, thank you all very much and have a wonderful evening. <laughs> thank you very much. The same thank here you. from me. Bye. Bye.